you're at an outpost in the middle of a winter wasteland. You walk into an auxiliary bunker looking for extra supplies and rations for your stay. Near the back, you find an entrance to a long, concrete hallway. Turning on your flashlight, you shine down the long corridor, the end nowhere in sight. You begin to travel down, each step pushing you more and more into darkness. Eventually, the walls, floors, and ceilings turn more rigid and undefined, the hallway beginning to transform into a cave as the walls align with rock, your feet kicking up dust and pebbles. Then it happens. Your flashlight dies and you are left alone in a cave which you have never been into. As you press on, you don't know if you're walking towards the entrance or the exit. What seems like hours go by, finally your journey ends as you see it reveal itself from the darkness. Now pause. You don't know what's coming out of the darkness. Yet, isn't that the scariest part? FDR famously said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. For decades, that phrase has been used to encourage those struggling with self-confidence and those who are worrisome to take action. To FDR's credit, he was onto something with his now notorious quote. Things which cause us fear. They don't frighten us because of their nature or the threat they impose, but because of the unknown experience they bring. An experience which you can take control of. To better understand this lesson, I'll take you to the icy fields of Svalbard, where extreme weather advisories are as common as your morning cup of coffee, and survival is not guaranteed. Travel is not advised as we attempt to understand the White Vault. The White Vault was a five-season audio drama which began in 2017 and ran all the way to 2022. Created by K.A. Stats, the show follows a found footage format of different individuals throughout their journeys. The show is broken down into three parts. Season 1 and 2 follow a repair team traveling to Outpost Freestead in Svalbard, Norway. Season 3 follows a research team at Base Camp Pietra in the Patagonia Mountains. And finally, Seasons 4 and 5 is a combination of the two stories, which concludes not only the entire show, but their respective plotlines. Seasons 1 and 2 are pure, unfiltered excellence. Jonas, Kasner, Karina, Rosa, and Walter are sent to an outpost miles away from civilization for maintenance. While the repairs take no time at all, the crew is stuck to wait out a storm before returning home. The five members of the repair team spend time drinking coffee, eating, playing cards, and enjoying each other's company. While searching an auxiliary bunker for extra supplies, Kasner and Rosa find an entrance to a cave which leads to an underground village encapsulated in the ice. What the five believe to be the archaeological find of the century slowly turns into their demise. Strange and mysterious forces begin to drive the crew mad, and eventually each member is picked off one by one. While the crew attempt to make a daring escape across the Arctic hell they have found themselves in, it soon becomes obvious there is no escape. Realizing there is no way to avoid the situation, they decide to face it head on. They are unsuccessful. But despite what they've endured, one survives. Season 3 follows a research team sent into the Patagonia Mountains to get this... Research? A new discovery of glyphs and remains from a former civilization. The combined forces of professors, researchers, and students hike deep into the fog-filled mountains only to be stranded. Ava, Josefa, Lucas, Zhao, Carito, and Simon begin their work in the mountains. What they discovered goes against all pre-existing knowledge, understanding, and pure laws of nature. As a thick fog and extreme weather conditions roll in, the team is soon stranded on the mountains. Their only choice is to wait and go about their objectives. We soon discover someone among the group is actively sabotaging the team. While some members of the group begin to start seeing things amongst the fog, others carry on with the research. As the team finally comes face to face with the situation they are in, it's too late. A massive earthquake shakes the mountain and the team to their cores. Landslides and rocks block off all entrances and exits to the camp, and the research team is left buried in a living tomb. But similar to seasons 1 and 2, one of them escapes. Seasons 4 and 5 follows a combined group effort to rescue the research team, but also makes a return to Outpost Freestead at the end of the saga. In addition, seasons 4 and 5 
begins to follow the narrator, or documentarian as she is credited, as she soon discovers her part in the story is much larger than we the audience and her originally thought. Rather than someone who compiles all the documents and presents them, she is now a catalyst for the story as a whole, now and forever. I mentioned how great seasons 1 and 2 are. Season 5 is a good homage and send off to the original two seasons and acts as a good conclusion to the overall story. But I'll be honest, seasons 3 and 4 are pretty mid. The characters in the first part of the show are real. We hear their lives, their children and spouses, we hear about their ambition and want them to survive. Season 3 doesn't have that. All of the characters are somewhat self-absorbed, with the exception of Simon. They only care about their academics and what mark this will allow them to put on history. There's times in the show where they completely ignore danger and the threats around them because it would harm the research. Season 3's characters aren't relatable. But that can't be the only reason the show doesn't hold up, right? The writing has to be off in some way, the plot unprovoking. There has to be something which causes the show to have such a sharp decline. While season 3 is essentially a compressed version of the first two seasons in a different location, that isn't the problem. The reason the show doesn't hold up is because of us, the audience. The first two seasons of the show offer the audience the ability to submerge themselves in a sense of fear. We are afraid of what will happen to the characters, we become hesitant of dark and cold areas. There was a time I was listening to the show while shoveling snow in my driveway, and I found myself looking around and over my shoulder. This is what the show offers. So when the remaining three seasons came out, we were expecting that. We wanted the sense of worry and dread wanting to feel connected to the characters only for them to be lost. But allow me to let you in on a little secret. When you're expecting something, you are no longer afraid of it. While the show has a few overarching themes and messages for the audience to decode, I want to share with you a more practical one. You see, fear is a construct. While fear is a very real thing many of us cannot control, it is still a construct. We give things in our lives more power than they deserve simply because of our perception of them. Think back to the beginning of the video when I asked you to picture what was coming out of the darkness. It was most likely something you are afraid of. Now ask yourself, how much time have you spent around that thing? If you're afraid of something, you try to avoid it. Whether it's clowns or spiders or more conceptual things such as loneliness or losing someone. You do whatever you can to not be around or face any of those things. And eventually, when you are forced to deal with those fears, your body and mind is sent into a state of shock and panic, not because you are afraid, but because you are dealing with something you are inexperienced with. Think of it this way. When you start a new job, the first couple of days or weeks, you're nervous. You have a lot of odd senses about you. But eventually, your work becomes second nature to you and you lose all that feeling. Everything in life is the same way, including fear. There's no such thing as overcoming fear, you just overcome your emotions. The second half of the White Vault did not lose fans or its intrigue. Those who listened just became comfortable with what the show was offering. Like the characters, we experienced enough of what the writers had in mind that our own minds became trained to listen without fear. For those of you who don't believe me, think about all the struggles you have overcame in your life. I'm not talking about great feats which require you to give all and then some. I'm referring to the little things you do each and every day to help you keep going. Asking that girl to dance, applying for a promotion, getting out of bed in the morning. You weren't afraid of what was going to happen, you just didn't know what would. The most common fear among us all is not snakes missing out, or death. It's the fear of the unknown. And that's what fear is, the unknown. The unknowing of what is going to happen when the outcomes of your actions take hold. But if you choose not to act, then you hold yourself. The characters in the White Vault face an entity which they do not know. It is something they cannot see or describe as it drowns out the existence of their friends. Kasner, Rosa, Simon, Dragona, every character who was sent to some desolate outpost somewhere where no one can hear you cry for help are all locked in a conflict with something unknown. 
The same thing happens in our own lives, each of us in the midst of a fight between action and inaction, for we question what is on the other side of the unknown, the other side of fear. And this is what leads us back to FDR, who still, decades later, is a prophet of the world around us and the world ahead of us. For the only thing we have to fear is fear itself.